Hello, dear students. Welcome to your social science class with me again. Today we are going to take chapter 4 and you will find it in page number 31 in your textbook. Page number 31, the revolt of 1857. So here, the subtopics that we will cover today are Sepoy Mutiny, also known as the First War of Independence. The second subtopic will be Causes of Revolt. Third is the main events that took place during the revolt of 1857 and 58. And fourth is the causes of the failure. And fifth will be the result of the revolt. Okay, what happened after the revolt of 57 and 58. All right, so I hope you're all doing well and keeping up with your books. And as we are going on with new and new topics every time, I also request you to kindly rewind whatever we have taken so far and always be prepared for a new topic. All right. Okay, so number one, Sepoy Mutiny, also known as the First War of Independence. So this Sepoy Mutiny was termed by the British and the First War of Independence was termed by the, Indo uh, the Indian historian. Now what here, here what it meant? was that uh, during this revolt of 1857 and 58, so many Indians have taken part and together they have united. So for so long, what happened was earlier the Indians, they were fighting among themselves, annexing one another state, right? But when this revolt of 1857 and 58 came, the Indians united and they decided to throw away the British government from India. So this, that was the main aim of the revolt of 57 and 58. So the British termed it as the Sepoy Mutiny, while the Indian historians termed it as the First War of Independence. Now let's go to the second point, that is causes of revolt. Here in causes of revolt, there are five main causes. All right, I'll read out for you. One is the political cause. The second one is the social and religious cause. Third one is the military cause. And fourth one is the economic cause. And the last one is the immediate cause, All right? So we'll, I'll explain the political cause. Under the causes of the revolt, the first one is the political cause, all right? So why political cause? Because during that time, Lord De Lausy, he introduced the annexation system, all right? So the policy of annexation here, what they did with the help of this annexation, they could, anytime they could annex, annex means to capture, okay? To capture, so anytime they could get, capture any land and the Indians uh, sudden, uh, slowly, one after the other, they lost all their states under the British, all right? So one of the reasons under the political cause was the uh, Lord De Lausy's system of annexation. Then second one was uh, Nana Saheb. All right, Nana Saheb those days, he was so dissatisfied with the British that because uh, uh, he was getting the pension. However, the system of pension was so dissatisfying for him. Then another reason under the political cause was uh, Rani of Jhansi. All right, so this Jhansi, uh, Rani of Jhansi, she adopted a son and this adopted son was supposed to take the throne of the father, right? But the British government denied, and that was a uh, political cause, okay? Then comes the uh, Bahadur Shah Zafar, all right? We all know that Bahadur Shah II was the last Mughal ruler, and uh, it all started from uh, Babur, right, in 1526. Then it passed on to the hands of Bahadur Shah Zafar, all right? Now, when it came to Bahadur Shah Zafar, he was staying in Redford, Delhi, and the British forced him, all right, forced him to shift to Qutub Minar, somewhere in Qutub Minar, all right. So actually, he was staying in Redford, but he was forced to shift there, and that caused uh, deep shock to the Muslims, especially, all right, because for them, Bahadur Shah Zafar was a very respectable uh, leader for them, but uh, this uh, system has really shocked them and that also led to the political causes in the outbreak of the revolt of 57 and 58. Then comes the 
uh, annexation of places, uh, the popular Indian states like the Jhansi, not states, sorry, the cities like Jhansi, Satara, and Nagpur, they were very uh, well-known Indian states. And when the British has annexed the states, the Indians were very disappointed, and that also uh, led to the outbreak of the revolt of 57 and 58. Then comes the second main cause of the revolt that was military cause. Remember the first one I told you just now was the political cause, okay? Now the second one is the military cause. Here what happened, the Indian soldiers, whoever were in uh, British army, they were forced, okay? They were forced to um, uh, use this Enfield rifle. And here what they did, in order to remove the cartridge of the Enfield rifle, they had to do it from their mouth in order to load the rifle. So uh, for them, why this was so um, disgusting for them? Because uh, here they have greased the cartridges with animal fats, that is, uh, pig and uh, cow, while uh, the Muslims think that the cow is so undesirable for them. Whereas for the Indians, uh, the, the Hindus especially, they consider the cow as a sacred animal, right? So this was one of the main reasons. And then the uh, Indian soldiers, they started rebelling, okay? They started, uh, they were very disappointed, and that was also another cause under the military, all right? And that led to the cause of the revolt, all right? So, Coming to the religious and uh, religious and social cause. Here, what happened uh, during the time when the British were in India, they were running the East India Company. So here, the British uh, missionaries were coming to India, and this was causing a main, th main threat for the Hindus. All right, because they felt that they felt that the Britishers were trying to convert them to Christianity, and maybe not now, but later on, even the uh, Indians will have to convert themselves to Christianity because the English education was coming up, then even the laws uh, were set up in uh, English norms, right? And there were so many uh, systems that was run by the Christian missionaries where uh, the, they started levying taxes on the, uh, those properties which was owned by the Hindus, uh, which was owned by the uh, temples and the mosque, okay? So this all led to them to think that uh, the Britishers were trying to convert them into Christianity. So that hurt the religious sentiments of the um, Hindus, and that also led to the outbreak of the revolt of 1857 and 58, all right? Then, um, then another, another cause under the uh, social cause was uh, the higher post, okay? So those days, the higher posts were given to the, um, given to the uh, Indians, whoever was following, uh, the, who was, whoever was obeying the Britishers, right? And the Indians were given very low status. They were not respected in the society. And even the higher jobs were given to the British men, all right? So whoever uh, respect the British, they were also given respect in return. So these were the social causes that led to the outbreak. Now the next one is economic cause, okay? So in economic cause, what happened those days, all right? Those days, Indians were so rich that they had their own textile industry and they were so many countries who were coming to India to have a trade relationship. So in return, when they take the textiles from India, when they were taking the spices from India, they used to give um, precious stones and gold to Indians, all right? So there was a trade of gold and uh, precious stones in return to the textiles and spices with the Indian uh, traders. So this was really exposing the Indian, um, exposing the Indian richness uh, of uh, 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 textiles and even the Indian spices was exposed to other countries as well, all right? But later on, when the British set up their own industries during the Industrial Revolution in the 18th century, when the British started setting up their own industries, they took the raw materials from the Indians, they converted these raw materials into finished products, and they sold it to the Indians again. So here they started earning in a two-way process, okay? So they started earning in a huge amount. They were getting a lot of profits through India by doing a business. So that caused economic causes, and that also led to the outbreak of the revolt of 57 and 58, all right? So 
till now under the causes I have explained to you about the political cause, the military cause, the social and uh, religious cause and just now I uh, shared you about the economic cause the next will be the immediate cause all right okay one more point I missed out in economic cause here what happened was even in the uh, Indian uh, even in the ranks of soldiers all right the Indian soldiers were given the lower post and here the whoever was holding the higher post before they were um, given the lower post and so they face some financial problems, all right? Then uh, thousands of soldiers became unemployed because suddenly when the stat, uh, states were annexed by the British, the, those uh, judicial posts, the higher posts which the Indians were holding before, they suddenly became jobless and they had to suffer and struggle in order to earn their livelihood, all right? So that was economic cost. Then comes to the immediate cause. So one of the immediate cause I've explained to you earlier, that was about the cartridge, right? So during that time, in order to uh, load that Enfield rifle, they have to use their mouth too. Um, and uh, they have to come in contact with the grease. Grease is like something oily, the fats of the uh, animals were used to um, uh, used in the cartridges so that was very disgusting for them and not only disgusting but that was uh, hurting the religious sentiments because like I said the cow is a sacred animal for the um, Indians for the Hindus whereas the pig was very undesirable for the Muslims so it was very dissatisfying and they started protesting against it all right so that was the immediate cause okay when the immediate cause happened it immediately led to the outbreak of the revolt of 57 58 so it was that point when the citizens of india they felt that it was too much for them and it's time for them to uh, show some violence against the britishers all right so under this immediate cause this mangal pandey all right he was also an um, indian soldier at that time he shot the british police officer and he later he fled okay however he was arrested and he was hanged to death and during that time whoever was involved in that shooting uh, it was in barakpur all right so whoever was involved in shooting they were all arrested and taken to the jail and they were in prison all right so that was the immediate cause so later on this uh, was this news was spread all over India in and they also felt that we should also take part in this violent protest and this revolt slowly and slowly it started affected in affecting in many parts of India right like especially in Lucknow Delhi and uh, we have this um, Central India all right Banaras Jhansi these are the main areas where the revolt took place all right so the important leaders, okay, during the main events, now coming to the main events now, during these main events, the important uh, heroic figures of those days were Tantia Tob, we have the Rani of Jhansi, we also have Nana Saheb and Kunwar Singh, all right, they were the main leaders who led the other citizens of India, and then they also encouraged them to be a part of this revolt, and that's how the revolt spread in many parts of India and they fought against the British, all right? So one of these main events, okay, when these main events started taking place, even in, in some parts of India, some of the uh, Britishers, they started surrendering, all right? Because they felt that they can't um, control the Indians anymore and then started surrendering. However, it was not successful. I'll be explaining to you later on why it was not successful. As of, as of now, it, these are the main events okay so as i say the main events mainly took in uh, jhansi then uh, central india it took place in agra all right then later on the british what they did they annexed a very uh, well-known state of india that is Und. okay Und now it is awad all right so this award was annexed and that was that caused a major uh, outbreak of the revolt of 1857 and 58 because that was the point where indians decided that we have to uh, stop being the slaves of the britishers and we have to fight against it that was uh, that kind of mindset they had okay so the mutiny centered chiefly around three cities as i mentioned kanpur delhi and lucknow they were the main areas where the revolt took place uh, where the revolt started okay then uh, Nana Saheb, all right, those days Nana Saheb, 
he was staying, uh, he was living a very comfortable life, all right? He was enjoying his life. He was living a very luxurious life. He had all the comforts, he had all the needs. But when this revolt outbreak, uh, when the outbreak of revolt took place, he also took part in the revolt and he became a part of it. And he fought against the Britishers. But later on, he was uh, uh, annexed. Okay, sorry, not annexed, sorry. He was defeated. He was defeated by General Havelock, all right? And when he was defeated, he, he was powerless, so he fled to Nepal. And after he fled, there was no news of him anymore. And we still don't know about his whereabouts, all right? So, however, in November uh, 1857, uh, there was a saying that this Nana Saheb, he died. And then uh, there were the Peshwa ship, all right? Peshwa's uh, is in Marathi language, it means chief minister, all right? So those days, uh, Nana Sahib was a Peshwa ship, and uh, after his death, the Peshwa ship came to an end, all right? Then similarly, even Bahadur Shah too, all right? Bahadur Shah too, what happened? Those days, he was a Mughal ruler. As I said, he was the last Mughal ruler, and after his death, he was sent to life imprisonment, and then he was shifted to Rangoon, okay? So after he was sent, uh, shifted to Rangoon, he served a life imprisonment there, and at the age of 87, he passed away. So when he died, there was the glorious and the once mighty uh, Mughal ruler came to an end. Okay, so Lucknow is another center of rebellion. Finally, Lucknow was recaptured, all right? So Lucknow was one of the main center where the revolt was breaking out uh, so outrageously, right? Now, uh, this Lucknow was recaptured by uh, Colin Campbell, all right? So um, with the help of powerful, so he didn't do it by himself. He took the help of a Gorkha contingent, and uh, those time it was led by uh, uh, Jang Bahadur, all right? So this Jang Bahadur was the leader of this Gorkha contingent. So he, you know, uh, this, um, this uh, Colin Campbell, he took the help of this Jang Bahadur and they fought to recapture the, uh, the state called Lucknow, all right? <clears throat> In central India, the Great Rising was led, led by Rani Lakshmi Bai and Tantya Tob and who came from Kanpur, they, uh, Rani fought very bravely, all right? So this Rani of Lakshmi, there is a separate story for this Rani Lakshmi Bai. Uh, she was a married woman, she lost her husband, and she had an adopted son, all right? She was also part of this revolt of 1857-58. However, she was killed during the battle in June um, 1858, all right? So she was killed, and even Tantil Tope, he also escaped after the defeat, all right? He escaped, and after he was arrested, he was put to death, all right? So after, the, um, after this um, battle with the Rani of Jhansi and Tantya Tob, ultimately the revolt of 1857 also came to an end, all right? Now coming to the causes of the failure, okay? Certain causes has led to the failure of the revolt of 1857 and 58, all right? Now, uh, the causes are... Um, one of the main reason was that the middle class, all right, the middle class, they never supported the rebels, all right. Whoever was taking part in the revolt of 1857-58, the middle class never supported them. Why? Because they felt that um, these Britishers, okay, these Englishmen, they were the main, uh, they were the main people who can take these Indians to a modern age, all right. Because those days there were so many. Uh, caste system was there, social evils were there, right? Like the sati system, dowry system, even child marriages were there. So uh, after the coming of the Britishers, they has encouraged the widow remarriage. So uh, for some society, uh, they were not uh, approving with that, okay? They were not happy with the um, remarriages of widows. However, for the learned Indians, for educated Indians, especially like the teachers, the professors, and some um, educationists, all right, they feel that the Indians can go to a next level, to a modern age, if the British continue to uh, support, be with them uh, at this phase, all right? So that was one of the reasons, because the Indian middle class did not support the rebels, all right? Then the revolt of 1857 was the first time when the Indians got together, all right? So for the first time, uh, earlier uh, there was a lot of uh, war, there was a lot of battle, different dynasties came to India, like the um, 
Mughal dynasty came. Then we also have so many dynasties who came to India and they were always fighting among themselves, annexing each other states, all right? And that never helped them to develop, right? But when the British came, that was the first time Indian states, they united among themselves. And they also had the feeling of unity to fight against the British rule, right? So that was, uh, but however, um, uh, the revolt has uh, failed so badly because they didn't get enough support. Then another reason why the revolt fail, uh, failed was because there was lack of uh, administration, there was lack of or proper organization, and there was lack of leadership, all right? Though Rani of Jhansi and though Tantia Top, they were the leaders those days, they were not very experienced, okay? I would call it experienced. They were not very able leaders. They were not very experienced. So it also led to the... Uh, fail of the revolt, all right? Then came, um, uh, then there was lack of resources, all right? One of the reason again was lack of resources. These um, Britishers, they had proper communication, whereas the Indians had no communication at all. Whatever is happening in one state, the other state have no idea what, what is going on, right? There was no communication at all, and it was very difficult to pass information also. However, for the British, it was so easy for them because they had telegrams, then they were using the seas of India to reach to England to get the goods, all right, to support themselves, to get the military goods, right? So, however, for the Indians, it was not so, and that was also one of the reasons it failed so badly, all right? Then, um, then another reason was because there was lack of uh, proper uni uh, communication, uh, and everyone was just fighting for their own purpose, right? Some were fighting because they were not happy with the uh, system of landlord, right? Because those days, annexation was there. If the land is annexed, by uh, the British, um, then they have no right to get it back. If they did not, if they are adopted son, like I mentioned earlier, right? Uh, this um, Rani of Jhansi, she had an adopted son, so she, uh, her son was not allowed to annex the throne of her father, right? So these were the different, different, different reasons why people were fighting against the British. They didn't have one single uh, idea why they have to remove this British rule from their country, right? Everyone have different purpose. So that was also another cause, all right? Then, um, then I, I mentioned about these middle, uh, middle classes, like the uh, traders were there, small industri uh, industrialists were there. They were having a good relationship with the Britishers. So for them, they didn't feel that it was very necessary for them to have a revolt, all right? Then, so all this led to the causes of the failure, all right? But the revolt at the end, the revolt was failed so badly, and there are certain reasons why, all right? I'll come to it point after point. So now we're in the fifth point that is revolt, causes of the revolt of 18, I mean, uh, the result of the revolt. After the revolt, what happened, okay? When this revolt took place, so many, uh, uh, so many places where people were shaken, okay? Some were shocked, some were like, they changed their mindset. They started feeling uh, that the freedom, uh, they started feeling that they need to fight for the freedom, right? So many ideas came up. People also became more courageous. Earlier, they were working under the British. Some of them were so scared to even raise their voice, right? So every time they had to obey what the British were uh, asking them to do, like for example, the Indians were forced to plant the indigo and they had to do it. And the East India Company were taking the major decisions, right? And in East India Company also, most of the Indian soldiers were there. However, they were given the low, uh, uh, lower grade, okay, even in the uh, jobs also. So, all this caused the failure of the revolt, and um, they also caused the revolt. However, the revolt was a failure. It was a huge failure, all right? Now, as a result, okay, now as a result, in 1857 and 58, after the revolt, that is post the revolt, all right? So after the revolt, so many changes came up. Now, uh, instead of... Um, the previous rules, the British now they applied even uh, more stricter rules for the Indians and they suffered even more, all right? So let me discuss in detail now the results of the revolt. 
Here, the first one is the end of the company rule, all right? As I mentioned earlier, the British administrative under the East India Company, they were make, uh, taking their major decisions for the Indians. However, after the revolt, the, uh, the Queen, okay, the Queen of British, she took control of all the British, admin, uh, of all the administrations, all right? Now the British Queen, she will take all the decisions, whatever has to be done should be taken approval from her and only then it was set up. So whatever, uh, whatever laws or whatever written laws were passed by the uh, Indian uh, princes and the prince, it was denied, all right, because they only followed the Queen's uh, rules, all right. Then uh, um, a Secretary of State of India was to take the place of the President of the Board of Control. He was advised by the Board of 15 members and the designation of the Governor General was changed. So earlier the Governor General uh, was taking uh, most of the responsibilities. However, later on with the end of the East India Company, he was known as the Viceroy. All right? So this Viceroy, he was uh, the main person who used to deal with the Nawabs, the Rajas, and the princes, all right. Then next reason, next result under this, uh, uh, next result after the revolt of 1857 to 58 was the change in the British policy, all right. Now this time, the British has completely changed all the policies that they were running in the Indian states, all right. Like, for example, to appease native princes, the British declared that they would honor all treaties and company with the native rulers. Further doctrine of lapse was uh, abandoned, okay. Earlier, what happened was doctrine of lapse. Here, what happened, if a person doesn't have a son, or uh, say, for example, a king, okay, if the king doesn't have a son, all the properties, all the empire that he is, uh, that is under his control will come under the British rule, that is doctrine of lapse, all right? So this doctrine of lapse, however, uh, the policy under the doctrine of lapse was abandoned, all right? Now, when this, it was abandoned, the British, uh, sorry, the Indian princes, they were somehow relieved because they felt that now the Brit British do not have every, any rights to come and annex their states, right? Because the doctrine of lapse was abolished, right? Then um, the... Henceforth, the continual existence of the native states was guaranteed. However, there were clearly defined restrictions and limitations. So uh, when the, uh, the British policy also made sure that there should be certain restrictions and limitations for everything uh, under the military powers also, all right, then um, military powers were also greatly reduced for the Indians, all right. Then end of the Peshwa ship and the Mughal rule. So, the result of the revolt of 1857-58 also led to the end of Peshwa ship and the Mughal rule. So what is a Peshwa ship? Peshwa is a Marathi word. I have also explained to you earlier. It's a Marathi word. It means chief minister, all right? So Nana Sahib was one of them and it came to an end completely, all right? There was no more Peshwa ship. Even the Mughal rule came to an end after the revolt of 1857 because Bahadur Shah Zafar, uh, he was... Uh, he escaped, okay, he was escaped and then he was arrested and uh, given a life imprisonment, all right? And uh, after, he de after his death, the Mughal rule came to an end, right? So that was one of the result of 18 revolt, all right? Then the next one is the reorganization of the army, all right? So the Britishers here, they felt that maybe the revolt uh, took place because we had less army in the, uh, less British men in, the, in our army, all right? So they started recruiting more and more British men in their army and less Indian men were kept in the army, all right? So they reorganized the army, all right? So the British realized that the numerical inferiority, all right? So because of the less uh, number of British men in their army, maybe that was the main reason, uh, reason why the uh, revolt has, um, the revolt has come up, all right? Because during this time, what happened was when the revolt broke out, the Indian soldiers, what they did, they released all the, uh, all the prisoners in the, uh, prisoners, uh, whoever was under uh, under the British rule, okay, the prisoners were 
and the comrades were all released from the jail all right and these people after they were released they moved on to they shifted uh, some of them moved to delhi some of them shifted to lucknow and then they uh, they started you know the revolt they discussed among themselves they called more people all right they invited more people they went out and started having small meetings among themselves and this encouraged more people to join the revolt all right so they felt that now we should keep less people for the uh, sorry not less people they should keep less uh, men in the british army and then uh, more british men were recruited in the army all right then the next uh, next result under the revolt of 1857 and 58 was the economic exploitation all right now with the uh, coming of more and more british manufacturers uh, india became a dumping zone for all the british ma manufacturers now more everywhere you go everywhere the uh, in all the shops in all the marketplaces uh, they started finding only the british goods all right and the indians were only producing cotton and jute they were only producing raw materials whereas the britishers were taking the raw materials at a very cheaper price converting it into finished products and then they were selling back to indians all right that caused a heavy economic exploitation all right then the rise of nationalism all right next is rise of nationalism then some of the great indian leaders have really sacrificed their lives right so they became a hero for most indian citizens okay so they were like a hero and then it brought a great inspiration now people also started following their steps that all they also started feeling that we should also be one of them we should also fight against the british that was the rise of nationalism and then the last one is the policy of divide and rule all right now the british in order to uh, in order to rule against uh, with the in order to rule the indian successfully they decided to follow the policy of divide and rule and it was introduced by the lawsi all right here what they did the indians and the muslims they united among themselves and they were fighting against the british rule right so what they did uh, here was they divided the indians and the muslims and they uh, made a huge gap between these two uh, uh, religions and the muslims were given more priorities and the indians were given less priorities this caused uh, enmity among these two religions and even now also even in the present generation it's very difficult for the indians and the muslims to unite right there is a huge difference maybe because it all started from divide and rule policy all right so these were some of the uh, results that happened after the revolt of 1857 58 Okay so that's all for today so today our topic was the revolt of 1857-58 and these were the points all right so it is also known as the first war of independence then there were certain causes that led to the revolt political economic social religious right then main events took place right the great leaders like tantia tob kunwar singh and rani of jhansi they uh, the main events took place by these heroic leaders in different parts of india right then there were certain causes of the failure right the revolt was however a failure and there were certain reasons which i told you and then result of the revolt the revolt became unsuccessful and it led to different changes in the society all right so that's all for today thank you so much and we'll see you soon with another topic